Hi, so somebody asked me how to set up custom user properties. So I thought I would make a quick video about that, and by quick I mean they're all basically exactly the same. They're just, um, well, basically you use this little cog icon and set up whatever property you want. So this is the wallpaper I'm going to use. I'm going to leave that there. This is the wallpaper that's loaded currently. It's fairly basic by my standards. I have some leaves, I have some blur, I have some characters, they're not animated, one of them has an x-ray, so uh, the purple layer is my always x-rayed layer, uh, and my blue layer is the one that would actually be in my scene. So I'm going to put the purple one directly on top. You can do that by copy transformations and paste transformations. So now they're directly in the same place. And I have uh, this random picture just to demo something else later. So I'm going to start by hiding this layer. So you go up to the icon, the cog icon, click it, bind a user property. We're going to add a new property. And we'll say uh, always x ray. So uh, you can call this whatever you want, does not matter. Your default value is on or off, checked is on. So we're going to click off. Uh, you don't have a choice for this, it's always checkbox, and condition, I don't actually know what this does, I've never used it. This might be a binding it to a key, I'm assuming that's what that means, but um, yeah, I don't use this. You can, you can feel free to experiment with it, obviously. Um, so this is all you need, so you just name it, and then I want the default value to be off, so we're going to click OK. And now we have this button, and our settings. So this is a pin. I actually just figured out what this does uh, while I was figuring out what to record for this video, uh, but I'll cover that in a second. So we're going to close this, and our purple Cora vanished. So not only did it vanish, I also can't bring it back. And that's because this user property kind of overrides what you see in the editor. So if its default is set to off, it will always be off unless you go back in, edit the property, and change it to on. Now it's back. So I would recommend making these changes, or making these custom settings, once your wallpaper is completely finished and you have everything where you want it to be, you can go in and set every layer and every effect that you want to have a modification to. But uh, for the sake of this demo, we're going to leave this as off and close. Uh, so the pin. The pin attaches... Uh, I should bring this up. This is the pin I'm talking about. This pin attaches this rule to a layer. So if I close out of this and go to this this random image here, is I just was using it as an example. It doesn't matter what it is. It's just another image layer, and I'm going to go to Bind User Property again. And instead of making a new one, I'm just going to pin this... I have this layer selected. I'm going to pin it to the same toggle. And when I close this, this goes away, because it's now following the same rule that I set up for the other image. So if I save this and apply wallpaper, we now have this always x-ray. This is the rule that we just set up. So if I turn this on, both the Cora and the random image I have are now visible. So this visibility toggle is now controlling two separate layers in the editor. Uh, so that's actually something I just found out recently and is super cool and we'll probably be using it in the future. Um, what's next? So we have... Uh, we should always... If you're gonna have different... La like, this is kind of a bad example because my x-ray layer and my regular layer are identical. If your layers don't line up exactly, um, you should always have a toggleable layer for both of them. So I'm going to add the same rule on a different toggle to my Cora um, this layer. So we'll say x-ray layer default value of on and click OK. And that's all you have to do. And so now we save and we apply wallpaper and we get another. So now we can have the x-ray on or off, and we can actually just completely hide both of the characters. So this would only show the x-ray and hide the one with both features, or you can switch them, 
and you can have the one with the x-ray feature. So again, it's a bad example, I know my, my layers are identical. If your layers are not identical, or they have like armor or clothing that comes outside of the x-ray, then if you were to only show this layer, it would show up that other stuff like behind it, and it wouldn't make any sense. So I would recommend having a toggleable layer for both, and you can always just turn off the character if you don't want it. Um, so I already have this layer set up. I actually wanted to set that up anyways, so I'm going to do that again and just pretend I didn't have that. Um, so if I wanted to add a dynamic, not a dynamic, a forced depth of field to this image, you can go into your background layer and add a precise blur. Change the kernel size to bigger, and we'll just give it some random value. So now the character's in focus, and the background's out of focus. And that helps, in my opinion, to kind of add a little pop to your wallpaper. It makes your character more of a focus. But then if you kind of like zoom in and look at it, then the leaves are kind of weird. The ones in the background should be out of focus. And also, you'll notice there's no cog. I can't, I can't do anything. There's no cog here, there's no cog here, there's no cog here. I can't make background adjustment layers or uh, user property layers with the blur effect. So doing here does nothing. So I'm going to remove it. And instead, I'm going to add a full screen layer, and I'm going to put it behind Cora, behind my lead, no, in front of my leaves, in front of my background, but behind Cora. And then we're going to add the blur effect to the full screen layer. And I'm going to put it back to the exact same settings that it was before. So now, because I've split my leaves into two layers, I have big, very few big, foreground, you know, in-focus leaves, and then I have more out-of-focus behind the blur layer um, background leaves, then they also get affected. The particle system also gets affected by the full screen layer. So I, I cover that slightly more, and I have another video about making leaves and background effects, um, but th that's basically the gist of it, is you have a full screen layer on top of your background, you add a blur to your full screen layer, which blurs everything behind it. So you can split the foreground and the background with this layer. And now, because it's on its own layer, you can add the general layer visibility. So we're going to add a new property. So I could pin this to one of the existing ones, but I don't want to do that. I want to add another new one, and we'll call it depth of field. The, I, I like it, so I'm going to leave the default value of on, and that will just give us another little toggle option. So we'll save, apply wallpaper. Now we have these settings don't reset every time, so I'm just going to reset them. So this is what the wallpaper would look like now if you were to download this off the workshop. Um, I can have my always on x-ray layer, I can have my normal layer how I want it, and I can have my depth of field. Some people don't like it, they would rather have just the whole background in focus. Um, so you have the option of turning that on or off. And then the only other major thing that I use these options for is if I were to go into the x-ray layer, in the x-ray effect, you have cogwheels down here. So UI editor particle element exponent, this is the size of the reveal. So if you make it really big, or if you make it really small, the wheel gets really big. If you make it really big, the wheel gets really small. It's the opposite for some reason. I don't know why. Um, so if we bind a user property to that, we'll make a new one. And we'll say x-ray size. So our default value, uh, a decent value is like 3. A minimum value, I don't feel a need of going below 1. After 1, it gets huge, and it, like, I don't know, it kind of defeats the purpose of having the x-ray. So I'm just going to go with, uh, we'll say 1.5, and a minimum value of 8. So around 8 to 10, it'll get to be really small. And we'll say OK. Close. And then multiply. So multiply is how bright the text la the x-ray layer is revealed on your base layer. So 1 is normal. It is, you know, it's, it's an exact duplicate. If you go below 1, 0 is off, 
and then we'll say like 0.7 it's part of the way revealed, 0.4 it's revealed even less. So between 0 and 1 is like on and off. If you go above 1 it gets brighter, and the higher up you go the brighter it gets. So basically anything above 1 we don't care about, and we care about 0 and 1. Just remember that if that makes sense. So we'll add a new property and we'll call it x-ray on off. So we're going to have a default value of off. Uh, minimum value is 0, maximum value is 1, and then fractions. You can have this on or off. Uh, if you have it off, you will only be able to choose 0 or 1. If you have it on, then fractions, obviously, you can do like 0 0.5. Or you could, you know, make a partial x-ray. Uh, so I'm going to leave this off, because I don't want a partial x-ray, but that's entirely up to you. And we'll close out of that, and we will save again, and we will apply wallpaper. So now we have our reset our settings. Uh, so now this is what we would have. So our x-ray is off by default. You can turn it on, and now we have an x-ray. You can change the size of it to be smaller or bigger. You can turn the depth of field on and off and you can hide and show various layers. So again, they're all exactly the same. You just have to look for this little cog and then figure out what you want to add. You can do it with particle settings if you wanted to add a thousand leaves for some reason. You could come in here and you could add a particle counter, add a new property. So this is the slider for the count. If we want a maximum value of a thousand, we could give it a maximum value of a thousand and just give us a gazillion leaves. Uh, so anything with a cog wheel can have a user binding to it. Colors, again, add a new property. We can get a color selection, and we can save and apply. And now we have a color selection for the leaves, and we can make them black or whatever, or red, or and we'll change color. So again, it's exactly the same. All you have to do is look for this little cog wheel, and then bind or unbind a property. The last thing I want to cover is that unbinding a property does not remove it. So if I go into Edit Properties, we have this color binding. Just for the sake of making it, I'm just going to make a new binding for this playback. Uh, that's not going to work. Okay, we're just going to unbind this user property. If I go back in here and bind a user property, the color one is still there, but we have this little warning. This warning means it is not... Um, again, this is the pin to attach the thing to a thing. <laughs> this is a terrible way of explaining it. This user property is not currently bound to anything. So if we were to apply this wallpaper again, if I were to... Uh, a second ago you saw the leaves were red. If I, again, change the leaves to red, it's not going to do anything because I unbound the user property from the selector. Now I can come back here and bind it again by pinning it, or I can unbind it, bind user property, delete the user property. So if you have something with one of those yellow triangles, you either incorrectly bound it to a layer, accidentally removed it from a layer, or deleted the layer it was applied to, and you should either figure out what it was applied to and try and fix it, or just delete the layer from the little X that was over here. So I think that's everything. Uh, I hope that was clear. It's very simple. Just click the cog and uh, you can make the changes there. They all work in the same way. You're very limited on your options of what you can and cannot do, so if it doesn't have a cog, you can't do it. You can also do something like add a full screen layer on top of everything. We'll add a, I don't know, a tint layer on top of everything, and then you could add a color selection. We'll just lower that so it's not quite as ridiculous. We'll add a new color selection. And so now we have a color selection over top of everything. Save, apply. So if you just for some reason wanted to tint your wallpaper, you can do that with a color selection. Um, yeah, so it's fairly easy. I hope that helps.